deal. Sick. Oh, that's a good fish. He's got some length. He's got some fight all of a sudden. Because then it, oh, whoa, 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 net, net, net. You call them when you get out and okay. tell them what happened. I'm still not understanding what you're saying. Big old gator. Dang, I didn't even know they were on this lake. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Weston Smith channel. Holy smokes, have we got a huge mega video in store for you guys today. We literally take a gigantic three-day East Texas fishing trip on the bath boat, the hot tamale. I know we haven't broken around in a long time. I've been listening to you guys in the comments. We've literally been fishing off the John boat, which we love, by the way. Brand spanking new. The kayaks, the banks. We've been beating them up, man, and it was time to hit the lake. So join Devin, myself, and Luke behind the camera, who's filmed basically all the B-roll in this mega episode so huge shout out to luke check out his socials down in the description we got a little cabin retreat here on lake nakanish and we're fishing some of the most scenic beautiful lakes this episode is packed with a ton of fish catches we caught some big ones and we lose some big ones y'all oh it was like a four there was some unfortunate events that actually went down in today's episode i've never even seen this happen to anybody with some very sketchy scenarios. You have so much to look forward to and it kind of stacks as the days go on. It started a little slow and then things got hot and heavy and the bite picks up, man. It was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Big shout out to all of our viewers who have been so kind and the subs have been bumping, the likes have been bumping and because of that, GMC reached out and offered us a vehicle for this trip. I think you guys are gonna absolutely enjoy it. We're not gonna make you wait any longer. Here we go, y'all. Grab this from Lowe's yesterday. It uh, it fits and it's going to be able to accommodate the kayaks and the bass boat as well as the John boat that y'all are sitting on right now. Money bags. Swim baits. We got some soft plastic swim baits here, and we got a lot of our larger hard plastic swim baits. Toss them in the back. It's looking like it's mainly charged there. There's one light that's still red, but I think we're good to go on this trip, y'all. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna crank down these rod and reels and then I think we are about good to go. Yeah. Got it. So Devin just asked a good question about is it gonna be good with all the dogs and everything? Because this interior is like sick, y'all, and very clean, and we wanna make sure the dogs aren't tearing it up, right? Check this out. I figured out what these buttons do, babe. It was just today. So, boom, gets this side, right? Hit this one, use that side, but bring the fans in. This is what matters right here. This double button, check this out. You hold it, watch this. Oh, snap. Wait. Yeah. So they're gonna have all this room. The dogs are gonna be just fine. We're not gonna be tearing nothing up. They got all this room back here. We'll probably put beds. We'll actually probably put our stuff up there in the middle. It's gonna be sick, man. Love this Yukon. This one? You just hold it, yeah, hold it. Nice. Now one more time. So sick, sick. Babe, I want one of these. This thing is legit. Look, look at all the stuff they get on the screen in the back too. What the heck is all that? All right, we gotta get the boat loaded up, y'all, and get on the road. Okay, got it. I thought we bought the right height, but it's really high. We maybe should have got a drop one. All right, y'all. Upon further inspection, the boat is like very slanted. Like, doesn't look good. <laughs> we really need this thing to be flat and level. So we're gonna get the five inch drop hitch that we have from the Tundra, and I'm just gonna detach the boat real quick, make sure I put down the pad so it doesn't start rolling away on us. We're gonna take it off here. We're gonna uh, drop this baby on, and hopefully it will be flat and level. Otherwise, I think the happy medium is gonna be a three inch drop, but honestly, this might be, this might be perfect. So let's try it. That was such a pain, I forgot, and I left the camera in the boat. I was like, where's the big camera? We gotta film this. And then I'm like, oh, uh, so, it was in the boat. <laughs> uh, back on the road. We got it hooked up, man. Let's start this drive. Your first road trip. Let's go. Hang out with Zeke. Let me get these off, y'all. Holy smokes, it's gonna be a party in the GMC. <laughs> Don't worry, y'all. We got onboard Wi-Fi. Just fashion your seatbelts. We'll be there in a few hours. <laughs> Looks as though we have made it. A little uh, 
humid down here. Y'all kind of fogged up. <laughs> okay. Ooh, it has been a while, man. It's been maybe a month since we've been out on the hot tamale. I barely remember how to put this thing in the water, let alone start it. All right. We'll pull over there to the dock. We are gonna get this thing started. The parking lot's a little ways away, so she's gonna go up park the uh, AT4, and we'll catch you guys over here. We're gonna try and break this thing down today. Big old lake out here in East Texas, so. Wish us luck, man. We've only been here once before. This is gonna be fun. Oh, one's chasing it down. Oh, I had him. Dang, first bite of the day. Saw him on live scope, y'all. He chased it down. Devin's working the shallows with the frog. Could be any minute with that with the overcast conditions. Oh, there's some sha oh, there's some there's some action over there. We need the top water over there right now. Got him. Weird. That fish like fought all the way to the boat and then decided to come off. It's crankbait. You go ahead and do what's best for you and I'm just gonna cast straight. We could have three fish in the boat. Texas rig, you had one on the frog. I had one on the chatterbait. We've missed three fish. <laughs> all right, gotta up our game. Alligator. Alligator, right here. Dang, I didn't even know they were on this lake. What the heck? Oh, he's huge. <laughs> he's not too small. His tail. Yeah, that's crazy. So whenever you see that you're coming up on one that's right at the surface like that, you want to go away from it. Come on, babe. Come on. Come on. Get up here. Get up here. Right. Okay. You're, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. One. Well, that means it's right in front of you. <laughs> I saw it. Can we not do that? <laughs> alligator infested waters. Alligator <laughs> fell into alligator infested waters. What are you doing? So like, if you see one right in front of you, don't hit it. You got lucky too, because if you fell on one of these things, that could have been really bad. There's stumps everywhere. If you get cold, we can go back. I don't care. I don't know what you did. You just like, you hit it, and, and you, instead of your feet being like this, your feet were like this. So it was like the ultimate worst case scenario. You were like, here's the metanium. Yeah, take, take the, the metanium. <laughs> I'm soaked. Surely this will dry pretty quick though. If anything, the dock with the cabin is like right around the corner and I can go change, but. Oh man, I don't know what happened, honestly. <laughs> It was the stubs. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well, we're in some shallows, y'all. 80 degree water temps. It's still bright and early. We're gonna see if we can find them up shallow. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we should go in there or not. I don't know if it's worth it. Does it get really shallow? <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, a fish, a fish, a fish. <laughs> we actually have a fish. Can we land one? Oh my gosh. Oh no, he's fighting when he sees the boat and it's just a little guy. Oh my goodness. Okay, she wasn't wrong. First fish in the boat. One on the chatterbait. Haven't broken one out in a year and a half or something. That's a plump little guy too. Pretty healthy. Okay, maybe we'll cast back here for a minute. Devin's throwing the saucy swimmer on an underspin. So really very similar presentations to swim baits. Uh, we just, we have not fished here in so long and everything is so stumpy. It's like, oh my gosh, you could go crazy with the Texas rig. So unless you see them on live scope, like that first one we missed, it's almost better just not to uh, even really mess with it. I, I feel like at this very point in time, so I'm gonna let him go. And I say that because we wanna kind of cover water and see if we can find where these fish might be. We're just in this little, almost like pond, isolated from the lake, somewhere near the cabin that we're staying at, I believe. And that was the first fish of our East Texas trip. Four bites in, one fish in the boat, one Devon in the water, one alligator in the lake. It's it's an eventful, eventful morning. Walk the puppies. Yeah. Whew. 
battery low. Always gets you. I was like, dang, this thing is across the lake. I have to hightail it back to the boat. Just docked the boat at the cabins, y'all. We were gonna grab a quick bite. Devin's actually gonna change clothes, dry off a little bit. We're gonna walk the puppy since he's got a small bladder, this youngster. So we gotta make sure he's spick and span, and then we're gonna get back out on the water. Look forward to some more catches. We've had four bites, missed three out of those four. So we're slacking. We're gonna try and pick it up on the latter half right here of Lake Nakanish. I think it's gonna storm later. So with that being said, maybe we got on that prefrontal bite and they start tearing up the top water. That would be absolutely epic. A lot to look forward to. Let's go. But when I come into Ortex, I look at the short interest, I look at the shares on loan, and I look at the utilization, and then I come over here and I look at the days to cover on the two-week average. And like, it's all worthwhile to click through and check out what's going on, but those are my four like go-to things. I also like to just see the trends of what's going on with the on loan. Like, I just like to check the trends of really how this is all playing out. All right, y'all, 10.30, time to resume the fishing. We're walking back out onto the dock. I think I'm gonna change into a sun shirt, because now, oof. Sun's starting to peak out. Let's roll. 26 feet, but you never know what could happen. Yeah, look at that. Oh! Whew. Just hit our first stump of the trip. Shut the motor off. We're still in gear. Still in gear over here. There we go. See if anything happened. Imagine it just got jarred enough to shut her down. I, I bet I bet it's fine. How does that side look? This side's looking pretty good. Well, on that note, we're kind of in a zone we want to hit. We're just across from the other bank, so we're going to go ahead and just troll over there. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> nice. Both of us almost just went overboard in a matter of hours. I'm sure it's coming. Jeez. I think the, the chances of rain increase later, but if that's the case, then we'll just uh, live it up and game plan for tomorrow. All right, y'all, we decided to hop off the water. The storms are inbound. We wanted to do a little bit of grilling, so we have got some fillets on the grill as we speak. We kind of did a makeshift patio, utilizing the table over here for the pups so they don't run away, and we got them hanging out with us. I also just cleaned off the hot tamale. She is looking spick and span. We're about ready to have some lunch and then head in to the town and grab a permit to fish another lake nearby, and also we've got some special guests joining us in hopefully today's episode, but if not, in the next episode as we're out here hitting these East Texas lakes, so be sure to subscribe and hit notifications We've got more fishing content in today's video for you guys, so don't go anywhere. What the heck is this? How did I miss that? Look at this hot tamale. I mean, she's clean. Uh, well, we're just enjoying lunch. Uh, we came off the water at perfect. Perfect timing. Look at this. Whoa. I'd say we timed that just about right. We had just enough time to cook lunch, clean the boat, get it covered, and enjoy ourselves before we go hit the next lake here in just a few hours after this passes. Impeccable timing. We'll catch y'all here in just a second when we move on with the rest of today's to-do list. And Finn's getting some rest. It is so hard. <sighs> Yeah, we just got back out at sunset after the storms and we are tying on some uh, mid-depth diving crankbaits. There's a thermocline layer here and we're seeing some bait and some fish right around the 10 foot depth mark. A lot of bait hanging out right there. That's where the bass are going to be hanging out. So we got some mid-range depth cranks and we're going to cast these babies out, see if we can't get a bite right here along the dam to close out the evening. Parking 
parking by permit only. What's up y'all, welcome back to day two of the East Texas trip. It's 6.30 in the morning. We got our buddy Luke joining us today. He's gonna be behind the scenes getting some footage. He might be on the deck cast and catching some bass, but we're at a permit lake only. You guys have seen this once or twice in the past. Such a beautiful scenic spot. Hoping to catch some big bass today since we had some bad luck yesterday. We're down here after, or I should say over here in East Texas, after some major storms. It had the water looking a lot chalkier than normal uh, compared to our last visit at least. And so we didn't get too many fish. We got one in the boat. I think we had five bites total. Devin missed one on the frog. I had one. I fought to the boat on the chatterbait. You guys saw it. It was in this episode. Anyways, we're hitting a new lake now today and then the place is locked. You have to have a permit and also there's a key and for some reason we weren't issued a key to get in here so how this system right here works oh there might be one that has a code on it yeah, it's this ah one. okay just kidding there's no key there's a lock with a code and what happens is you take one of these locks off right and as soon as you take the lock off then this pin right here can get lifted through the hole that that lock is in and then bada bing bada boom you're fishing before you know it. just hold tight we're trying to get in the gate to get on these fish it's some epic footage the place is very unique i think you're gonna love it i actually have a permit uh to fish lake kurth i'm at the gate but i didn't get a code from the city i'm still not understanding what you're saying you say you got a permit to what now? What is it? You can't get in the gate? Correct. They didn't give me the code. They didn't give you the code? They didn't write it down, no sir. Well see, I don't have that code. What you want to do is call the city. Now they don't open up till eight o'clock. Yep. And let you in. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, that's wait, amazing. Wait, okay, I'll tell you when I get down there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard that phone call, but basically we were S-O-L and then uh, this gentleman said he will come down and let us in the gate because the city hall doesn't open up for another couple hours and we can't get a key or a code, so I guess he has one of those too. Hopefully we'll be on the water soon. He could barely hear us. The service is terrible out here. Can't get in. Can't get in. <laughs> How are you? Good morning. Uh -oh. Can I give you the code? No, she didn't write it down. Oh, she didn't write it down. No, I, I forgot. Last time we were here, I, we got it. Perfect. All right, but now this fits that long shank lock. See okay. if you make, make sure you get in. You got it. Dallas. Well, we're from Dallas area. Dallas? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thanks so much. But I got to hear him. It's okay. No, no, no. I mean, no the problem. service isn't all that great around here, anyways. <laughs> you got to talk real slow and loud. <laughs> all right, we appreciate that. Thank you that. very Thanks much, so Wayne. Much. Luke and Devin are locking up the gate. We are in, man. We're here. Let's hit the water. So quick update, we are on the water. Right the oh, and speaking of stumps, there's some stumps here by the way, so you gotta be extremely careful. That one didn't kill the motor, so uh, there's that. But yeah, maybe we should just get on the trolling motor and uh, start fishing? You guys let me know down in the comments. Do you wanna see us just rip through this lake and just boom? Bad idea, just kidding. So I got some marks here where we've caught a fish and where we got a bite, but I think we're gonna stop right here in this little inlet, hit the points, and then make our way to those spots, just so that we don't miss any fish. Probably gonna start with some moving baits. Um, we did see another gentleman fishing back there. It looked like he was throwing a bottom bait, and I'm sure he knows the lake. So we'll probably be switching things up. Here we go. Ribbit. Ribbit. Oh no, it, it blew up and ate it. I had to wait too at first. I just, I don't know what happened. This is my favorite frog. Where's fish number two? Where's he hiding? I like that, right under the tree. I was just thinking, it's a little breezy. Maybe I should go to a spinnerbait. Cloudy, overcast, maybe I should make the switch up. But then I just saw that blow up on the frog and I'm like, no, this looks so good. So hopefully we can make that happen again. By the way, my back is turned a little bit just because of the wind. 
I'm doing this for y'all, man. I want you to get the angles, but I also want you to hear me, so. I just, oh, he's going to the juice. Just right there is pretty good, that spot right there. So like, yeah, casting like straight in front of the boat, that line looks pretty good. We're on like that contour line where it's like shallow to a little bit deeper. You think I should try the, the buzz bait? I haven't done the buzz bait in so long. And if this don't work, I'm going straight for the chatterbait. Jeez, I wonder if it's not bass. Got one. Oh, stay down. Woo! Decent? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Just get it ready. That's a deal. That's a deal. First one on camera. <sighs> Babe, hell yes. <laughs> Come on with it. Let's go. Let's go. In the net, baby. In the <laughs> face. On the See, that fish wasn't going nowhere. That is 100% <laughs> true. Ooh. All right, guys, first fish of the morning. First fish for me of the trip. I'm getting out fished again. All right, anyways, first fish for me of the entire trip. First fish this morning on Lake Kurth. Super exciting because I got it on that underspin saucy swimmer. You guys know that has been my go-to recently because of this new lake. We haven't fished in a long while and it is doing work. Got him out a little bit deeper. We're about like 18 feet of water. We're gonna get him back in the water. It is still pretty dang early, 7.30, and let's get some more. She's waiting on me to get the shots and I'm over here cleaning the lens. She's got the bass looking so pretty right now. I got one hit on top water, she got one hit on the sauce. So I'm gonna continue with my idea of throwing the buzz bait for just a minute and see if I can get a hit on this thing. <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. I don't normally add a saucy swimmer to my buzz baits, but a lot of people do, uh, especially if you've got a different buzz bait other than the Guggen one where like it kind of rolls on its side. You ideally want to fish a buzz bait as slow as possible without it actually sinking, right? So what's gonna happen is when you add a little weight to it, it can kind of help that body stay down low and keep your hook up and that's really what you want, right? Buzz bait back in the water. And you gotta start reeling right away and there it sinks, right? You want to maximize your time in the strike zone and if your buzz bait is below the surface, you're uh, missing out on potential. So what I like to do is I cast out as soon as it hits the surface, I already want to thumb it and raise the rod tip. That way it stays on the surface without sinking and I get my reel going and, uh, and then I slowly start to lower my rod tip. That way it spends all its time on the surface instead of under the surface. So a couple buzz bait tips for you guys. Hopefully you can hear over this wind. Let's see if we can actually catch something on it. See that? <laughs> oh. I told you they're in here. <laughs> oh, that's a log. Ooh. Okay, y'all, I'm downsizing. We're going 3.3 inch saucy swimmer. Just on a little Ned head right there. I think it's like a quarter. No, it's not even a quarter. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Probably an eighth ounce mushroom jig head right there. So exposed hook, probably not gonna miss many bites as well as the fact that we should get more. Anytime you guys are getting close to a skunk and Devin's got me beat at the moment, you might wanna bust out the micro size swim baits. That little kick, they can't resist. This is the Gobi color, 3.3 inch. You guys know Guggen baits are always linked in the description. And we're throwing it on the Zillion SVTW. I've literally only thrown this real like one or two times before you guys saw that uh, little unboxing first impressions review kind of thing we did on it caught some fish uh, it's got the clicking drag I don't know if we'll so hopefully we link up with like a decent sized fish and you guys get to experience that firsthand and we're throwing it on the twitch rod I do that because it has an exposed hook so this is a that lighter finesse rod it's got a soft tip a good little fling to get this bait out there but then at the same time if I get a fish on this little hook it's not going to bend out because I'm not you know wrenching it with that muscle rod seven five heavy extra fast but instead I'm working it on this lighter rated rod almost for finesse tactics so let's go ahead and get this thing in the water <laughs> Oh, I got one. Oh, You're, or do you have me? No, 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 I'm on a fish. <laughs> this is why we can't. Golly. Uh, oh, that's, that's, yeah. Nice. Oh, they got, uh, they got a man. All right.
right guys second fish in the boat upon further inspection after getting this fish in the boat we were like where's this line and poor guy must have broke off on who knows what kind of bait because all i can see is the line going down into you know like literally down his throat so we're gonna he's been going around like i don't even know that's like a good at least like four foot of line that this guy's been swimming around with can't get whatever he has down there out but we are going to go ahead and cut the line and get him back in the water but second fish we found a grass flat that these guys may very well be hanging out on and uh weston still needs to link up with one i don't know i mean got it sweet yeah nice Whew. all right that's the shot you want right there uh, gotta get a little water on the lens that's what you want <laughs> like a handful of boats are working out deep this morning so we might uh, try some of the offshore spots as well feeling good all right that's perfect that's exactly what we want y'all we moved offshore a little bit we're on this hump and there's some grass that's just subsurface and you find the grass you find the bass the problem is there's a lot of it here so we're just trying something a little bit different if i zoom out you can see exactly what we're doing here I was gonna just work the edge, but it ended up being pretty deep, so we had to move up on top of it. And the grass is about five feet under the surface, so maybe we'll get one out here. You can see on pan optics, it's about 15 feet, but the grass is down about five feet, so I've got a four to six foot diver tied on, and we're just spot locked out here in the wind. smokes it's looking dark i think we're gonna load things up go grab some lunch i don't know about y'all but <laughs> that sounds like a great idea to us hope you guys enjoy the catches out here on kurth we're gonna go ahead and make a move to the next lake <laughs> gopro chick The GMC they lent us for the content this week uh, has Wi-Fi, so I'm uploading a YouTube video while we're driving back to the cabin, which is so sick. Okay, see you there. It worked. Got the lock off there. Rotate that. Lift that bad boy up. And we are free and clear, boys. Woo, okay, we are back and lunch is ready. Let's get our skewer on before hitting the water yet again. Check us out, man. We got the boat covered, but the storm seems to have broken. You guys are, whew, it's humid out here now. The storm seems to have broken. I think we're gonna be back on the water here shortly. So uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys out there. All right, y'all, we are getting the boat prepped for round two on the lakes today. We went ahead and left Kurth. We had some lunch, we let the storms pass. And uh, now we're back here on Nakanish. It is looking beautiful, overcast skies, a little breeze. I feel like we're gonna get on hopefully some hogs. If we can even catch one, two, three, four, five dinks. Hey, that's fish in the boat, but a big one would be nice anyways, guys. Let's go ahead and get this thing launched. Big pop up front. Locked and loaded. hit that that secret move and you you put the hood under the hat <laughs> we're learning today we've only fished this lake one other time and uh, we're gonna get into the trees into the thick stuff see if we can find some fish in a new area of this place since it's easy to just go fish the dam some of the grass over there we've had luck at in the past so uh, wish us luck please here she comes <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that was the first challenge. 
All right, let's go. If you didn't film it, you didn't catch it. Oh, sure, he was 10 pounds. He was 10 pounds, I believe. Where's the GoPro footage? Well, I wasn't filming for that one, Billy, but I, I put them on my scale. Just didn't get a picture of it. We just launched, but uh, if you can tell us where they're at. <laughs> uh, we really haven't. In fact, we, we've never been past the bridge right here, so we're just kind of curious what's up. Are you a YouTuber, man? Uh, we got a channel. Weston. Weston Fifth? Yeah. Dude, I just saw your video today. No way. <laughs> Thanks, man. Hey, we're trying to come out here and put one together, but we've only caught a handful, so. If you go all the way past the Got it. Uh, yeah, last time we were here, we caught some right over there in the grass along their yard. Yeah. Have you seen any gators in here? I've no. seen none. Really? Never seen a gator in here. There's a big one. Yeah. You saw a big one? <laughs> right <laughs> over by the dam, by that, by that, uh, is it the outlet, I guess? That yeah. concrete? Oh, yeah. I saw your Lake Kurth video this morning. <laughs> no way! That's, that's yeah. crazy, because that, uh, we filmed it a while ago, so that's yeah. cool. We got another one coming. We just hit there this morning. Yeah. I'm I couldn't catch nothing. Out. She caught two of them. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah she I missed it. all my frog blow ups. She caught a nice one on the, over here near the dam, right? Whenever yeah. The yes. first one that we missed was yeah. that. Yeah. She lost a five pounder right yeah. when we got here. It was a good one. Don't get him going on all that. He'll mark every spot that you fish. <laughs> you go right ahead. Hey, around. that's fine. We're chill. Are y'all finding them like mainly deep off the like the thermocline or as shallow as like because we've been fishing the banks a lot, but I don't know if it's not worth it. Because we're you know, seeing that thermocline. It doesn't seem like they're pushed up on the banks really. That's yeah. what I was curious about. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, we're gonna try both of those and and then some. Well, I appreciate you, man. Hey, no all you guys. Till next time, y'all. Cool, oh, man. Just a little bit of insights. And from everything they told us, we're going the wrong direction. Yeah, so we're gonna try a little bit this direction. Needless to say, there's uh, so much scenery this lake we wanna showcase for you guys. Trees like you would not believe. I mean, it is Stump City. We're in the running lane and I'm still sketched out, but see if we can knock some out on the crank, maybe get something on the uh, swim baits, and then we'll hit that other end. We got big plans for the evening. We're gonna be fishing all day. Although it looks maybe late to you guys, it is only four, <laughs> 420. It's 421 p.m. So we probably got four hours of light, four easy hours of light left for the camera, and uh, we're gonna make the most of it. Let's try and get on some fish. And you want a Texas rig? I would maybe take off the chatterbait and throw a uh, Texas rig on the go-to rod. Picture? I think so. Let's see how fast we can get this stuck. So we're in the we're in the running lane, but on this lake, there's only I think six boats on the water. There's only one ramp. You can see anyone coming from a mile away, so you just kind of get off the lane real fast. And I'd heard from one of the locals on a previous visit that uh, this is a great spot to fish. It might have been a different time of year, I forget the exact time, but because of the thermocline layer here, it looked like yesterday when we were fishing, the thermocline was maybe 10 feet below the surface here, and all the bait was just above that, and that's where the bass are going to be at feeding oftentimes as well. So I've got a little diver here that's going to go probably six, seven feet possibly, and the idea is we get right in front of those bass face if they're hanging out right there at the thermocline layer where that temperature drastically shifts and a lot of those fish hang out just above. So let's... Uh, Let's see if it pans out. I've, I've heard of YouTube videos getting taken down though just because people are like singing the lyrics. Like they'll get recognized for copyright. So yeah, so you gotta be careful these days, man. It's, demonetization is real. Check this out, Luke. See my bandito bug falling. Oh shit, it's going right into the timber right now. Dude, you can see all the submerged trees in here. It's just nuts. As I'm like panning left right now, look at all those trees. Woo. Say what? You stuck? Okay, gotcha. Easy to do here. Oh, that might be a fish. I'm gonna let that fall by that tree as we go and save Devin's lure. Got fish. Oh, it's a big. Oh, it's a big. Giant, giant, bro. Nackinus giant. That is what we're after. I literally said, okay, so Devin, hold on. Devin's stuck over here. <laughs> See, this is why you fish the cover, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta hit the structure, right? If you wanna catch the giants, for one, you gotta weed out some little guys. I'm also trying to be weary of the fact that I could run into a stump at any time. Oh my goodness, this guy's just going ham. 
first uh, fish in the boat for me today. We're just pulling out the big numbers and we're working on getting Devin's bait right here. So I'm just gonna toss the little guy back in the water, but we're making progress out here. Oh boy, yeah, well. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> iceberg. <laughs> iceberg Simpson. <laughs> All right, let's get him out of here before he's a heart attack. See you, bud. <laughs> We'll take that. Spray lettuce bandito doing it again. To expose this plastic. This is what keeps it weedless, guys. You have that hook exposed, but then you kind of pull the plastic a little bit, push that hook in there. I'm sure you guys have all fished a Texas rig, but if you haven't, look, this is the rig for the thick stuff. You won't get snagged on as many trees with this right here. You won't get caught in as much grass, but when the bass grab a hold and you set the hook, you penetrate the skin and you reel them in. Oh, swoosh. and you don't have to throw out the bank. Oh, you just caught one back here. Is that real life? Oh, quick release. Drop the bug. She just dropped the bug. Wow, okay, Lisa, well. Throw, throw them in. <laughs> guys, we just made an intense run through this place to apparently the end of the line. Uh, I've never ventured this far on this lake and I guess you can't really go much further. What's funny is there's like running lane buoys past this point but they've got it blocked off. I don't know if it's like, uh, I don't know what the deal is. Needless to say, we might try and cast a line over there and see if we can fish the unfishable waters. I did not expect to catch anything back here. The temps are a little bit higher. The, uh, it's very shallow. It's like eight, well, if you compare it to the rest of the lake, it's pretty shallow back here. And I was thinking, eh, they're probably back there hanging out deep. And literally she got one first cast on the Texas rig, I believe is what she was throwing. And now we're just gonna see if we can uh, tear it up back here before making our way to the other end where it sounds like some lungers have been caught by the locals. But uh, just to be able to see this right here is so cool. Makes the trip worth it, man. Views like this, the experience is crazy. All right, y'all, so we are currently working our way on the other side of the lake. We kind of slowed down for a second because we're at a point where we hit a stump last time and it's a little bit further in between markers and there's definitely some discrepancies on whether I would rather go full tilt or not. We got a fish marked a little ways up here around a couple more uh, corners. Also, we had a fish bite on a crankbait right around here on our last visit. We're in 14 feet. It's been, you know, 14 to 18 in the majority. Water temps here are 79 versus like 82 on the other end. And I'm thinking they might start biting from here all the way back. So let's see what we got going. You're right, Luke, we should probably check our PL on the old Robin Hood app. Oh, I forgot service out here is as bad as the stumps. What? Yeah, we'll never know. I think it ended the day at like 55 bucks or something, which is, we're happy with it. So this is what happens when you forget you've got your kill switch attached, is you end up like pulling it to the off position and then your boat won't start. That's happened to me a couple times. We're like, why is our new boat not starting? And we're complete rookies in that aspect. <laughs> Ooh, 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 oh, he ate it. He broke me off, babe. I cast it straight to him on uh, live scope. Yes, Told you. yes, yes. I got that fish. I got you. Oh, another one, another one. I'm on, I'm on. Oh, he's huge. All right, ah, finally, man. Live scope in a couple. I just broke off on the big saucy swimmer. And then I saw this guy hanging just below the surface, sight cast, well I say sight cast it, I didn't actually see him, but I live scope casted straight to him, and as soon as it hit the water he came over to her, I saw him bite it on live scope, felt it, went ahead and set into her. I'm just throwing that baby Ned rig that we rigged up earlier today, 
downsides for those bites. I don't know if this guy would have hit the big saucy swimmer. So in that case, another one in the boat. We are bringing you guys the all time highs out here on Nakanish. Let me tell you what, you won't find us catching dinks on this channel, baby. Subscribe for more of that right there. All right, y'all, we are rolling up on that marked fish. We just kind of stopped and caught that dink along the way, but uh, this is where we got a cat. I think we actually got two fish here last visit. If not, we at least got a handful of bites right in this little zone. So we are just going to uh, pull off parallel park, you know, toss from spot lock. See if we can uh, gather a fish or two right in here. And the idea with that square bill is that it's like it stays low and it's in front of those treble hooks. So the idea with it is that it will deflect off of the trees, right? And oh, it doesn't right. always yeah. happen that way. Right. But it's supposed to stay nose down. Go ahead and give it like a good whip. Yeah. It's supposed to stay nose down and it's supposed to block those treble hooks. It's designed specifically for this bait. Like if you're using a Texas rig, yeah. this wouldn't be the rod you'd use because you don't have much feeling in right. the tip because you're like working along the bottom and everything feels soft right you don't you're not like feeling what you're working over but with the treble hook baits like this i had talked about how you want that softer tip because then it, oh whoa 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 net 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 uh let's get the net let's just let's just go ahead and put it in. Yeah, let's just go ahead and put it in the net. nice wow that was a record-breaking demonstration right there <laughs> oh my god <laughs> What was I just talking about? This is the trouble. <laughs> I was yeah, just talking like, about the Texas you're rig. Breaking this down. <laughs> he was gonna hit anything you threw right there, dude. That was I'm just nuts. telling you, we were like fantastic. So Luke just picked up the crankbait for a minute, and we're, he's like, "This feels like a nice setup." And I'm telling him about the reaction rod and how the the tip is designed for the crankbait, and you wouldn't want to throw a Texas rig on it. I cast it out just to do a little demo, and boom, biggest fish of the trip. I mean, I'm not saying this is a giant. It's probably three and a half or something, but a nice bass, right? Just hits as soon. As it hits the surface we were just talking about how i'm seeing more bait fish flee the scene towards the uh, surface there and they're on the run and i don't know if it's bass eating these things or gar attacking them but i was like you know we should probably throw something like a chatterbait something that's going to be close to the surface and i bet it'll get attacked <laughs> slight intermission had to break the pliers out y'all but uh ladies and gents i've never had a topwater explosion on a crankbait like that as soon as it hit the water i'm surprised it got hooked almost like he just blew up on it <laughs> nice sizable fish on Lake Nakanish, man. How sick is that? Babe, this is a nice little three pounder right That's here. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's in the green Adidas bag. You literally <laughs> couldn't have missed that fish. Here's how you do. Oh my God. Okay. People would have thought that was crazy. Okay, so real quick, Seriously. let's get that. Let's get that clip where I pull the fish up and I'm like, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, it's right, just gonna right. be all hype. Go and try your luck. Test me in again. We let it rain. 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 That black and white, that yingy gang. It's the officer. Please don't search us. We don't got a thing. Tell them park it up. Then that ass be poking up. Oh, one ounce shy. Bro, I just hey, got hey, you. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, oh, I just pulled oh, out of his mouth. No. Devin just had one of those saucy swimmer. We almost doubled up. That's a four pounder. I don't care what you say. Three <laughs> pounds, 15 ounces, one ounce shy. <laughs> Not in my book. That's a four pounder. All right, y'all. Let's get this one back in the water. Sick. First respectable fish of the trip. You couldn't miss on that one. He was going to eat whatever you threw at it. That was absolutely crazy. Let's go. You want a picture, though? Yes. Okay. Let's go. That literally feels like the first fish of the trip for yeah. me, just because yeah. it was like not a little one. <laughs> <laughs> not this, uh, wow. Some... That's why I buy the deep divers. <laughs> oh. Hey. Don't get on them. Uh, <laughs> we caught like two little ones on the other side. Did you find that? No, but uh, we did find like a four pounder right over here in the trees. <laughs> we got lucky with one. Did you guys catch them? Just caught a 412. Woo! We're thinking make our way over to the grass and the dam now just to close it out. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what we were about to yeah, do. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the move. Is this like y'all's home lake or no? No. It's his birthday, so we come oh, out here. Happy birthday. No way. Okay. Yeah, we come out here like okay. every year to go fishing. That's really? awesome. Yeah. Dude. This, this guy's a fishing maniac, so. That's, that's so cool. Awesome. Oh, dude. Green pumpkin purples. Oh, that's nice. much. I've been I've been shredding on that one lately. If Thanks, you've been watching man. any of the recent ones, yeah, Green Pumpkin Purple's been doing work. Try some try some more natural stuff out here, right? Dude, thanks, man. Yeah, he was of course. So, I crazy. feel normally I stock up like uh, before we make a trip like this, I'd go to HQ and I'd grab all the new colors and yeah. stuff. But I, I didn't have a chance. I started Brand fishing because I watched their videos. Okay. Cool. I, well, before it was Guggen Squad, just yeah. like you know maybe John yeah. B and Flair, and then you know I started using some of the stuff they use and then their products came out and I started buying them and I'd tag them and I'd reach out to them always kind of like DMing them on Instagram and stuff and then I finally got an opportunity to fish with I think it was John B first and then Rob and so since then it's just been kind of like 
yeah, as I much see. collaborating as possible, I see right? And grow the channel. Man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. I, I love them too. I, I, I want to get one of those. Are they, are they good? Like, These are, yeah, I mean, it depends on which one you're using because it's like they all are uh, case, broken, case specific. <laughs> we have, so, yeah, we have we've been broken. fortunate, man. We've been lucky because <laughs> I've right. snapped some rods. <laughs> yeah, I, I know how you fish right and left. Yeah, uh, we used to just always buy right handers, so we got a big arsenal, but I like the left handers for like bottom baits. I like working it with the right hand and setting the hook with the right hand. I like this real handle. Gomexis, man. Yeah. yeah, those are pretty cool. They're not Sweet, like huh? super expensive because yeah. these DRT They're ones are good. dumb expensive. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can make it out of here without Stick getting... to that boat lane. Yeah, holy oh, smokes, man. dude. You got to be within you inches. You got to be tight. <laughs> you got to be tight. Dude. There we go. Catch All right, y'all take it easy. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. I got beyond lucky with like a four pounder over there a minute ago in the trees, just like, well, it's a ways away. It's a ways away, but. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going that far today. <laughs> I, I think. You know what? I saw a guy just like cranking them off the bank too the other day. I'm like, man, we don't even need a boat. We should just be casting right here. <laughs> Golly. Not entirely true, but yeah. Not, not, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. All right, well, you have a good night. Yeah, I'd so give you some uh, tips on where we've been catching them, but it's really been nothing good, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's slow all the way around. Yeah. See ya. It got me stone cold. Hi y'all, we're trying to close out strong. We have ventured over to the last segment. We got probably another half hour, 45 minutes tops. I think we agreed we're just gonna go out to dinner tonight. We're gonna treat ourselves, man. I hear there's a water burger in town and we've been like uh, grilling every meal since we've been here. I know you guys have seen that. So, just making it easy on ourselves tonight. Hopefully we can smash some top water real quick and uh, end with the giant tonight and then we got a little bit more fishing tomorrow for the final day of the East Texas trip y'all. Stay tuned, let's see what we can put together. wrapping up day two going into the final day man i hope we catch a giant but i do want to thank you guys for watching the video up until this point please be sure to share this thing like subscribe all the things man notifications if you love the bass fishing content hopefully we can do more trips like this camping i want to know what y'all would like to see we've got the bass boat the hot tamale but if y'all are unfamiliar or new to the channel we also got the john boat the kayaks we bank fish we do we try to do it all for you guys as far as fishing goes maybe we incorporate some camping Regardless, thank you guys so much. It's only because of y'all support we have the opportunity to even GMC lent us this AT4 for content. All thanks to y'all, so just highly appreciative. Uh, looks like everyone's kind of loading up, and uh, yeah, we're getting ready for an awesome sunset dinner. Like I say, probably a little Whataburger, maybe grab a patty melt, and we're going into day three heavy, trying to catch a tank to finish things out for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the East Texas series. We'll catch you in the morning. First one on the frog for the whole trip. Let's close it out strong. Cheers, guys. Successful trip. She's alive.